bends wool around and he leads Potato. Yeah, right. Potato has been his go-to this entire tournament. Is he going to be crowned the monthly champion with the Noxalato to his right-hand side or left hand? I think he's left-handed. But Grandpa <laughs> picking it up. So you got some good pressure on this Noxalato. Who is joining him? Because J-Dragon does have the counter pick being on the blue side. So if it's a Barnji for the double win, you got the two vine. But going straight forward for the Volfi there. So just playing for that second spot. Yeah, Volfi's probably the, the good pick here is J-Dragon doesn't have a direct counter. That, um, you know, Mishuk does have that melee damage, which is very effective. But staring down a grandpa, a special attack grandpa, no less, it, it's not exactly where Mushuk would want to be. Um, yeah. I mean, potentially something like like a move flank would be better just to get pure damage early, uh, or maybe even Wolfie itself if J Dragon thinks that his is a little bit faster. Yeah, very true. Plague v Plague, just some good even trades. I kind of like the Mushuk. Uh, just because it eats up the WCLs if Cernif is picked up there. But yeah, if you're trying to just go a bit more aggressive, move flank feels good. Volfi feels good. But keeping it with the Mushuk here. All right. So hey, at least Yurusho Synergy is online if he does want to go that way. And the most now, I guess the Dragon lets Shakur decide who do you want to gun down. You have a Hypoxia for both of these Temtems. Which is is it gonna be they're both pretty impactful in this game right noxalato kind of checking the koish and the cernif there mushuk a pretty good answer for Velash. those p jabs are good into any temptem so we'll see what he decides to gun down i i feel like amaru does have a pretty good answer though because of handcuffs on volfi uh so so grandpa can target down mushuk early and just trap in Noxolotl and force it to take a tornado on turn two. Oh, okay. So wait, so trap in Mushuk turn one, but don't tornado the Mushuk, tornado the Nox or kill the Mushuk. Um, like a hypoxia onto Mushuk, depending on how much special defense this Mushuk has, it might do enough that Wolf would be able to take it down with a DV the following turn. Oh, uh, it, it true. would be, it would, hypoxia would need to do quite a lot. I think that DV would, we'd probably only get 20 25 percent out of it um but but then you know a plague under noxolotl means that that would be forced to take some of that wind damage it wouldn't be allowed to leave yeah and we've been seeing that noxolotl go in and out so i can see that line of play pretty good but the move flank and the yukama getting picked up and i will say i feel like yukama so noxolotl has been in the forefront but Yukama, somewhere in that middle, been carrying, or not carrying, but doing so much work for the side of Jay. Uh, so we'll see if it does it one more time. It is game one of our grand finals. Final two Temptons for Shakur and does decide on the heavy hitting Crystal Spiker Valash. Let's see who's going to get a bit of some momentum lead with that early victory in our grand finals, guys. Hype in the chat. Do we got J Dragon fans? Do we got some Shakur Tupac fans? <laughs> Let's see what we have in store. This should be another fantastic matchup nonetheless. Um, you know, for Amaru picking that Valash instead of Cerny, if I think that gives Ukama a little bit more freedom towards uh, the, the mid stages and end of this game, but they've clicked their attacks very quickly. The the Plague does trap in this Mushuk right away. Hypoxia as well brings him down to 37%. Uppercut on the other hand, it does more than half the Volfi. Combine that with a Toxic Ink Ooh. and it is going down the next turn. It, it does still stay alive to potentially Plague and trap in uh, either Noxolotl or whatever swaps into that spot. Uh, but but it is going down there's no bush available there's nobody who can revitalize nothing can be done to save this poor poor fox yeah i definitely agree and nothing too good to swap into as well maybe the move flank is about the best but move flank doesn't really want to eat that that damage as well but maybe it doesn't feel that bad for something like a valash because you could tornado the mashuk so no uppercuts on that Valash, and then Potato simply has a Toxic Ink. 
so i can see something like that or no no wait wolfie's going down regardless you gotta go down swinging so rosie i like your line of play uh maybe trap in that other slot so it makes a little bit of those decisions uh that much easier going into those couple turns i it's definitely possible that that mashuk goes down though um it, it did take quite a lot from the Hypoxia. It won't need a Tornado in order to fall. And, and that could just mean Tornado is saved for for Bully onto Noxolotl, which would be even more terrifying. But Jade Dragon, afraid of the potential, does retreat Noxolotl for move flank. He, he got a little bit of a hold towards his Acid Reflux, which is definitely what he's looking for. Um, move flank does take quite a bit of damage from that Plague on Wolfie's way out. The Turbo Choreography, though, is very nice. That means that any of these perfect jabs, if oh, Bashuk does not survive, so no more perfect jabs. It, it is nice for Mooflank though. Is now his Gorings without speed tornadoes. Yeah, exactly right. And the base jumps equal to three prio as well. So really good target for that turbo pickup there. Now both of these tamers have to decide what do they want to bring out. Uh, and not too, too easy of a choice. The move link is already here. You don't want to bring in potatoes into this grandpa. So Tuvan feels okay. But okay, going for Yukama just in case it was the fire coach. But no, both tamers just keeping it more safe. Going with the move link. So this is just a really good uh, uh, board for both tamers. Just a lot of potential to diss out some big, big damage. But the one biggest damage that we haven't seen so far is the tornado. Tornado from the grandpa, wherever it's going, it should be big. And that tornado does come through. It brings Mooflink down to 23%. It outsped because Mooflink clicked base jump instead of goring and splitting damage as well. So both of these Thames and Amaru side now down below 50%. Oh. Or down right about 50% both sides splitting damage that's that's not something you see every day in the grand mm -hmm. finals yeah definitely it's always been about single targeting make sure one of these temptems die so i wonder what that was about maybe didn't want to give a free swap in for you know for the two vine or something so he had the kill potential he could have based up the trap move flank but you know you comma let it get carried away it will indeed do just that carry the yourself to victory so just wants to get some good damage on you comma i don't know what grandpa has left in the gas tank move flank on the side of j dragon now indeed has goring at plus one speed that should easily be the fastest temtem on the board I don't know if it's enough, but if you add that into with an aquatic whirlwind, whatever he chooses will be going all the way down. Yeah, I mean, Goring, Goring, they are the first moves that go. Tsunami comes up next, saving his priority for later. He will bring down Grandpa. He does so much damage to move flank. That, that Hydrologist trait is just so terrifying. And that means that now either Koish or Valash will have to take an aquatic whirlwind plus a base jump because now this move link is plus two speed nobody can challenge j dragon's move link right now on speed yeah now even those three prio quetzalenos being thrown out from this fire coish plus two speed i believe still makes his base jumps even faster than those three prio plays so we will see i mean as you said aquatic whirlwind got saved for the back line does he want to save Yukama for that Valash in the back? I could almost see that. Or you could just try to get big damage onto the, onto either you get the kill on Mooflank or just some big damage on Koish. I'm thinking... Uh, I don't think there's a world where Koish can handle Potato. So I feel like a good play is just target down the Mooflank. If it's going to be Valash coming through there, Valash takes a big hit. So let's take a look. And yeah, Jay targeting that left spot here. Yeah, I mean, that that's absolutely fantastic. There's no more synergy. It's still going to, I mean, likely kill whoever he targets because everybody is so injured right now. Uh, it was pretty slow moving on that health bar, though. Move flank falls down on both sides, but it's now three versus two with Potato still alive and nobody directly countering it. Valash definitely can do a lot of damage, uh, but without any madness buffs currently 
and and with Ukama still here staring down this Valash with with quite a bit of a threat, and Tuvine in the back with a lot of a threat in that CPG, I think J Dragon may have turned it around a little bit from the early game, where where I felt like Amaru was almost in the lead. Yeah, very true. And you know, Valash definitely a big hitter, but Potato if you get him into Trance Trait that will all be special defense so even Velash can't chunk all that much and Koish has to go down this turn a simple toxic ink onto the Koish uh, slot there's no more swaps no more left to run so uh, as we said a simple toxic ink brings it down Yukama's okay to go down here it'll be potato with the two vine to take down Velash Velash has a easier matchup against the Tuvine as Tuvine definitely does lack in special defense but I think Potato in true J-Dragon fashion will be bringing it home for game number one but we'll see unless we're missing something here yeah I mean I think if, if even if Ukama is outsped by this Velash with its priority I, I think that Tuvine is still just going to be a little bit too much to answer it's still going to take two potentially even three crystal spikes to bring down two vine uh, and yeah maru does outspeed everybody here but but i mean koish is, is absolutely going to go down and now valash will have to fight two different tems uh both of which capable of doing quite a lot of damage thanks to the toxic ticks on noxolotl yeah and it's almost almost a slim hope if it was indeed mana's buff valash would be somewhat favored here but even with the Manus buff, this double up from these Temtems might be a little bit too much. Actually, a Manus buff probably does win this. But Crystal Spike getting that potato not into Trance Trait, but kind of close into it. Yeah, I think that that was Amaru's hope and dream there was just knock this potato into its sleeping position. Take down two fine while you're not afraid of any of these toxic ticks and, and then deal with Noxalata later. But I think that was just too much damage. That CPG did so much. And Tuvine is still not afraid of dying right away. And every time the Lash goes for the crazy crystal spike in the end game, it opens up that camera. But CPG to bring it down. And yeah, J Dragon winning game number one. Is he going to do it, folks? Is he going to bring it home? I won't even say any more let's just see how the cookie will crumble in these guys are going quick today so let's see as it says on the board j dragon is one game up which makes him one game away from being our grand finals monthly champion let's see how shakur wants to start this pick and bans he's been banning volarin all the time and it looks like a good old gentleman's ban for this vola I mean, Volarend still just demands respect. It's been since day one. Volarend has been the S tier Tem. He's, he's never fallen off of that perch. And, and I mean, obviously, every single team is still running these Volarends. It's it's just so versatile. Yeah, one of the only fantastic, I think it would be a fantastic two now, right? Because it would be Volarend and Kinu. I think the pig and and Gialis have fallen down. So yeah, just a simple fantastic two. So yeah, always demands that respect, as you said. But Shakur bringing in the move flank on the blue side. But J Dragon going with with what worked the very first game. Mashuk knocks a lot to start us off. How does Shakur want to answer it? Oh man, it almost feels like the Barnji feels okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, Barnji's good. It does give, uh, you know, of course, the wind is strong against both sides, but also mental towards Mashuk. If you wanted to switch it up a little bit, <laughs> um, I, I think potentially this lead is better for Amaru than game one. Uh, as previously, you know, Volfi was just too weak to those uppercuts and, and Grandpa wasn't able to get it all accomplished in time. So I, I think that Mooflink is better as it's likely going to survive a little bit longer and, and probably deal more damage as well. Yeah, we'll see if this was a neutrality Barnji, which apparently a, a lot of people aren't running anymore. 
Uh, that would be pretty good for Amaru here, but I believe it is indeed an air specialist. So let's jump right into it, guys. Game number two of our grand finals. Is this it? Is this J Dragon's moment? Or is Shakur gonna be shattering some dreams today? We gotta see, guys. Shakur obviously back at it again. Got here for a reason. So he has what it takes, but so far, J Dragon has been getting the better exchanges in these couple games. And yeah, in the end, that, that may come down to experience. I mean, we've known J Dragon in this community now longer than I've been around. <laughs> so he, he definitely <laughs> knows what he's doing. He knows how to turn the tides of a match, no matter how dire things may look. Uh, I mean, even even when people are writing this this man off, he, he comes back and he makes it to finals of a Subaki tournament or, or makes it to the finals of a monthly. All right, so just to eat up this hypoxia, really fantastic read for J-Dragon, and you get the crazy pressure the following turn. Base jump, eating it quite well, still over 50%, but nothing in the back line was eating it as well as the 2-1, so good swap out here for J. And starting to set up a P jab onto Moo Flank. Okay. There's definitely a little bit of fear in there that Two Vine is, is a little bit too slow. So Amaru could just click the exact same things, except maybe even Tornado this time, just to uh, guarantee that damage and and bring Two Vine down before it's able to attack. That, that would put Barnshi in a very good position for the rest of the game as. I mean, Ukama is the only one that would take neutral damage from this Barnchi. Everything else would be effective damage at that point. Yeah, I definitely agree. As you said, over 50% damage. So you could just rinse and repeat. We know Tuvine a rather slow Temtem. So that will bring it down. And you know, the most Mashuk can do, he can continue this P-Jab uh, stuff going on to the move flank. Maybe, I mean, Barnchi doesn't need it. One CPG will bring it down, but that's if the two vine does indeed survive. So maybe a little P jab to make it easier from this Noxalot. But Goring, just in case, is swapped and the Hypoxia does bring down the two vine. This is very devastating for J Dragon. Yeah, I mean, losing two vine, the only saving grace now for J Dragon is that this Barnchi's low on stamina. But all it takes is a couple of turns of clicking that rest button as nobody can really do damage or, or just swapping out and coming back in later once the Sukama has been dealt with and, and Barnshi might just be the sweeper. Yeah, and J-Dragon electing to go with the uppercut, so not making that defense minus two. It looks like he was just prepared for Yukama to do more of the damage there, so it does have the toxic synergy online. As you said, Barnsley running out of stamina, it could go down swinging. It has Tornado online, but I kind of like saving it for a little bit later. The only problem here is though, you kind of want to bring in Volfi to check the Yukama. But Mashuk with those pesky P jabs and uppercuts put a really good check on the Volfi. So this is a tough spot for Shakur to be in. What does he want to bring in to really really put the pressure back onto J dragon yeah i mean i i, I agree that volfi is probably the best bet here for ukama Velash isn't terrible if if it were a double swap with volfi and Velash, i would think that that's okay but no a big over exertion to hit tornado on the mashuk we know from the grandpa's attacking earlier this mashuk likes to survive those even with the hand fan air specialist and Barnshi now doing so much of that damage to himself, making J-Dragon's life a little bit easier. Turbo Choreography plus Water Cannon targeting down this move flank. The, the second Toxic Tick will be enough to bring him down, but not the first one. So move flank does get one more turn. Yeah, one more turn. However, J-Dragon with those awesome Turbo Choreographers he's been displaying this whole tournament uh, does get that plus one speed on both of these Temtems. So even the Goring won't be fast enough to outspeed something like this Yukama. Does J Dragon want to target the move flank so you don't get damaged or is everything going into that Barnchi spot? Let's go and see. Yeah, I think that turbo was was out of necessity a little bit for J Dragon if Wolfie had come in and J Dragon didn't target the right spot. 
then he he would just be a little bit too slow and take too much damage early on but that was fantastic wow tsunami brings down move link i I've, I've been the kind of person that that this is the yukama tsunami but j dragon has been proving me wrong today he's, is... he's probably gotten four or five kills between the upper bracket finals and the grand finals with tsunami yeah as we said yukama underrated but tsunami on yukama even greatly more underrated uh, so yeah guys we're seeing it here i've definitely played it in the past i enjoy tsunami just for that aoe i don't think a lot of people expect it after today everyone that sees the yukama looking out for the tsunami but beautiful stuff so losing the two vine early on but i think with that turbo making these temtems rather speedy yukama with an aquatic whirlwind still left for the valash i think he can do that and you know sack the yukama uh, against this Volfi, and then the other back line could do pretty well. But we'll see. I mean, who is he saving Yukama for? I feel like you just gotta get the speed enough to kill the Valash. I guess if Valash became something like the Koish, then you lose your Kama for nothing. So that could be something J Dragon is considering. Yeah, it's it's a little bit difficult, I guess, because Yukama would like to take down both Valash and Barnshi. Uh, and even some damage on the Wolfie wouldn't be a bad thing, although uh, Noxolotl can, can fight Wolfie pretty well. Aquatic Whirlwind does bring Valash down. No Koish swaps today. The Plague, though, it also brings Yukama down. The, the only saving grace there for J-Dragon is, is Uppercut. It does so much damage to this Wolfie. We, we, we'd seen it before. It's more than 50%. That means that Wolfie dies next turn if he decides to stay in exactly right and this mushok for j dragon doing so much starting off with the simple p jazz but staying alive and getting more and more value down the road but uh, down the road but potato coming out against this barnji so that barnji having a good time here against a double double toxic team but the plague connecting on mushok uh, i think with the plus one speed he should be able to get off one more attack let's take a look Oh, yeah, his uppercut does have speed. Barnshi brings Volfi down, but the big overexertion. He just barely holds on. Hypoxia hits Potato. Where an Oxalotl gets knocked itself into trance. So it's not going to be attacking this turn. It, it will be able to heal a little bit, but I mean, this is the situation we were afraid of earlier for J Dragon and, and kind of praising this Barnshi on Amaru's side, saying he can just leave come back in once Ukama has been dealt with and and because that two vine went down so early for J Dragon there's no more answers for Barnshi. yeah very true so this game just got super super tight I love the play of keeping the Mashuk alive so most people would kill it allowing the Mooflink to come in here doing a lot more damage but Mashuk overexerted so nothing coming out there but saving that potato for the fire coins most likely the last person standing tornado i believe well over 50 percent we see it there 55 percent which uh i think you have to oh geez aren't you with the huge overexertion yeah that that might have actually been a pretty big misstep for amaru taking that big overexertion it, it would have been nice to bring down Noxolotl, but it was asleep. You know, if it had stayed in, it wouldn't have been able to do any damage. Potentially resting, since Mushuk couldn't do anything, get your stamina back and, and hit harder later. Now Barnshi can't attack this turn. Koish decides to target down Mushuk, but that means Mooflank can kill Barnshi and Noxolotl can kill Koish. That is right. There is no world this Koish. I mean, Quetz is a powerful, powerful technique. But so is a big boy acid reflux plus two special attack that should easily be one shotting move flank unnoticed trade proccing right there so able to outspeed the koish goring plus a toxic ink if not acid reflux should be going first the fin bat <laughs> not enough yeah i mean fin beat it, it it still gets the tenderness off the toxic ink because there's no acid reflux just yet but that does over 50% now. This Koish is down to 41. It still is a toxic tick remaining. And and now, now Acid Reflux is available. So Finbeat yeah. will bring down this move flank, but, but Koish is doomed. 
Yeah, and a little bit of fan service ending it in true J Dragon style. Plus two special attack, acid reflux, and ladies and gents, tamers and tem deaths. We have our monthly champion, and is none other than Mr. J Dragon. Guys, round of applause. <laughs> G, 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 and hey.